So I'm uh, sitting on my tailgate waiting for my son. Why is that? It's because my UPS overnight came in and my crawfish are here. So I'm guessing in about 10 minutes, Ryan will be here with the crawfish. Uh, the pond is too shallow for shad. So we want to add an additional food source for these bass. So I ordered some live crawfish. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate them out based on male and female into two different buckets. And then we're going to sort of put them in different places throughout the pond. So that's today's project. <laughs> oh, hold up. Okay, so the, uh, the biologist, the pond biologist came out here last week and he's got all the sampling and he should be back here. He should be back with that info probably uh, sometime this week I'll get that information. But if you haven't been watching our videos with this new property, we have a three acre, I don't want to call it a pond, it's almost a lake. It's a pretty big lake. So when we first got this property, the back 40 year old drain tube was gone. It was rotted. So we had to dig that whole thing, berm out 18 feet down, fill it back in, and then replace it with a 15 inch tube back there because this is a spring-fed pond, which means that it's constantly filling and constantly draining. Next, my concern is that because of that situation and because of the quick fill, that we might not have decent oxygen. So I rednecked up an air compressor system. This is inside of a tub. Those are solar fans that are cooling, running off that solar plate. And then you can see the aerator 100 feet out that way. And then another one 100 feet out that way. Um, I don't have a lot of vegetation right now, and that's one of the reasons why I'm adding the extra oxygen. We're really trying to get the phytoplankton. We want to bump up the algae in this. I have to measure, but... You want to be able to see only about 18 inches down in your pond. A lot of people think you want to have a clear pond, and that's not necessarily true. You want to keep it <clears throat> the, the proper balanced pond, and I have a disc coming that you drop down in. You only want to be able to see about 18 inches down into your water, and that will be a healthy pond. When you can't see, when you start to get below 12 inches, then you've got too much algae too much of a bloom going on and you need to do the opposite so right now we're good we know that there's a great balance there's huge bluegill sunfish there's a full spectrum of baby bass all the way up to ryan caught an eight pounder <laughs> this first cast out here the other day so even the biologist that came down here said there really is no reason to shock it simply because you already know that you've got a good pop good population we are feeding the bluegill. I've started hand feeding them. My, uh, my automatic feeder will be here in a couple days and we'll put that out and we'll actually do have an automatic. And I'm using Purina fish chow, which is 40% protein and it's a fish based protein. That's what you want. So anyways, we're waiting for the crawfish. Finally, somebody showed up with my crawfish. <laughs> What'd you do, go eat somewhere? Yeah, I, I was the, like, I dude, I was crawfish. like, dude. I was like, dude, if you if he stopped and got food, I'm gonna kill him. So, anyways, here's the crawfish. <clears throat> Forty pounds, you said. Forty-five. All right, well, let's open it up. So, what we're gonna do? Get those freezer bags out of there. Careful, it's probably freezer gold. <clears throat> and we are going to cut them open in here, and then we're gonna separate them by male and female into these buckets. So, hold on, here we go. Ooh, that's smelly. Yeah, it's smelly and salty. Ooh, look at them, they all mad. All right, so there's the live crawfish, and what we're gonna do, it does look like most of them are alive. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's very cool. So the way that you tell, you turn them over. All right, you see that little, right there? Hold on. Okay, so I gotta teach Ryan. The way that you do this, you see how this has like a little legs right here? Yeah. See how it has little legs right there? At the bottom going up? Yeah. Now the female will have a hole there. That's their. That's where they grab on to mate. 
So that's a male. He goes in the, in the male thing, bucket. grabber things. It has a hole. So that goes in the orange bucket here. This one, I can't see. I almost need my glasses on to see. Does that have the legs? Yeah, see, it has those little grabber legs there. So that's a male. Male goes in that bucket. Here, here's a good example of a female. See how she doesn't have those grabbers right there? Okay, what about this one? What would you think? Male? No. It doesn't have grabbers right there. It's, you'll see like two white lines right there. So that's a female. Crabs right there. Actually, we're not going to separate them because we're getting a good distribution of male and females and there's so many of these things. I mean, look at all the ones we got here. It'd be kind of a waste of time to sit here and separate them, I think. Don't you agree? Yeah, I don't think it's necessary. Because we're only going to put them in a couple places. But you can usually tell the male because of this claw right here. See how big that is? Yeah. Now if I turn him over, look how pronounced that is. Right. And grab her. Definitely a male. And they will pinch you. Ouch, you son of a bitch. Look how big this guy is right there. That may be a female because she's got smaller claws. Turn her over, open her up. I'm in here swimming right now. I'm just gonna sort of just rinse them off. So they do have gills. Get around some water. Sort of acclimate them a little bit before I throw them in the barn. Ooh, they're popping. So, what I'm going to do, man, he would eat good. Yeah, they're all alive. Man, I haven't seen a dead one yet. I haven't seen a dead one either. Here, let me have the camera. Let me grab this. So, really, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to put them next to the shore like this and you can see how they're getting finding the water let them get a little acclimated in there but I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put them in here along the edge spread them around and that's enough I mean if we put you know a pile of 20 we know we got male and female pile of 20 pile of 20 all around the pond I think we'll be good uh, so Ryan asked are we gonna have to keep doing this I shouldn't have to. It's warm. It's uh, the temperatures are in the high 70s. Water temperatures are in the 60s, and these things should reproduce if the environment is right. If they don't reproduce, then we're wasting our time basically, because that's an expensive feeding. <laughs> it's like 160 dollars to get these things here. Oh. Crawfish, mobile. Get your crawfish. Get your crawfish five for a dollar. So we're gonna drive around the whole pond. We've got them in the back and we're just gonna stop every so often. And then Ryan's gonna go. He can actually just take the keep the lid off of it really. Grab your bucket. They're a little smelly. He's grabbing about 20 of them. He grabbed himself a handful. Oh, all that water in there. There you go. And just go down and go a little bit to the right. And we'll just put them right in the water's edge. And then he'll just dump those right into the water's edge. What are you doing? Where are you going? Where are you going? Get back in there. We should save a couple of these for Charlie. <laughs> and she'd love them. Oh, you are mean. You are a big meanie. Big meanie. Meany. Some of them are pretty much mini lobsters. Yeah, like this one. Like that oh. one. Look at that. Oh, look at that beast. You could get meat out of the claws on this one. See Man, if it hurts. I'd like to eat that one. Whoo, I can feel it through there. Yeah, you could eat that guy. Let's see those two legs. Yeah. Those are the male. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. Yeah, this little baby one. Oh, isn't he cute? Not even turning red. Let's get shrimp. Put him on a hook. Yeah, really. We should live float a couple of them and see what happens. <laughs> we should definitely do that. Take the worm off and just, just put one on. Just on a hook and a Yeah, we'll save a way. couple. How do you so, play? we're just taking about 20, 30. Go ahead and throw them in. Right on the edge. the first dead one I've seen unless he starts kicking. I don't even think he's dead. Some of them just take a second to start moving. Come on, 
Come inside. Let's go. Poor thing. She had a dental appointment yesterday. <laughs> She's still groggy. She had to have a couple teeth pulled. Go inside. It's raining out here. Anyways, I just thought I'd put that on film for you. We've been out at the farm property just working our butts off for the past three weeks. Getting ready for the general contractor to come in and actually do the restoration on the house. But the property itself just really looks good at this point. I'll do an update for you guys. But the pond itself is pretty much done now. It's been repaired. It's all filled up. I've had my biologist come out and test it. We may have to add some phosphorus if we don't have enough algae bloom. Um, a few different things. But we wanted to add that extra food source in because you really can't add um, shad into there. But it's, but it's a pretty healthy pond overall. Uh, that's about it, guys. So it's raining, raining. No yard work today. Uh, we're going to let this rain come in and then we'll come back and we'll do some real mowing out here once the sun pops out again. But again, we've got another springtime. We've got two or three days of rain popping in. So anyways, talk to you later. Doc. Mm -hmm.